TF2 is in both the best and worst place it's ever been. I'll repeat that again. TF2 is in both the best and worst place it's ever been. Now I know that might sound confusing, and well, that's because it is. How can something be doing so well for itself and yet be in such a terrible state at the same time? Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the anomaly that is Team Fortress 2. But don't worry, if you're still confused, that's what the rest of this video will be for, discussing the good and bad of TF2 this year and where we're potentially headed. So to start, let's go over the good. First and foremost, TF2 has had the highest player counts it's ever had this year, which is pretty strange considering lockdown restrictions had loosened from last year. See, while the quarantine lockdowns were starting last year, many games saw an initial boost in player counts that, over time, began to dwindle back down. However, TF2 somehow took this initial player boost and then only continued to grow off of it. Take for instance the monthly average player counts. Last year, one of 2020's highest player counts was around 73,000 players. This year, 73,000 would have been laughable. This year, we never even broke below an 80,000 monthly player count. And in fact, in June of this year, TF2 even broke its player count records with a monthly player count of over 106,000 and a peak player count of over 150,000. This was actually such a big deal that the news hit multiple different media websites such as IGN, Yahoo, GameSpot, and Kotaku. And now with TF2 keeping up its highest player count, the game has actually earned its way back into Steam's top 5 games list. Now, for the other good news, the game is still being updated. Well, kind of. This year we mostly received a ton of random patches and bug fixes, followed then by a cosmetic update in the summer, and then our yearly Scream Fortress and Smithsmith updates. And although we normally always get a Scream Fortress and Smithsmith update, I gotta say, the past two years it really does seem like Valve has been packing these particular two updates out. For instance, if you recall, both last year and this year, when these updates rolled out, we got a list of four to six new maps, new cosmetic cases, new war paints, and even a few taunts thrown in. And while this would seem like pretty good news for Team Fortress 2, that's about where the good news ends for us in 2021. For the bad news, I can start off just right about where the good news left off. Yes, we are getting packed out Scream Fortress and Smithsmith updates each year, but neither of these two updates are what the community has really been asking for. You see, what the community has been begging for is a real major update. A real, non-seasonal, Valve official update. Something like when we used to get updates like the Gunmetal update, the Invasion update, or even the Jungle Inferno update. Unfortunately, it has been four long years since our last major non-seasonal update, and at this point, it just looks like we may never ever get one. I mean, as a community, we have tried to give Valve every excuse. At first, for maybe the first two years, we figured maybe it was just taking Valve a long time to work on this next major update. Then after that, we heard Half-Life Alex had come out and required a ton of extra help from Valve employees to push out, so a lot of employees had to leave behind whatever projects they were working on, including TF2. So we figured after that, surely they would go back to their offices and work on TF2 and finally give us something, but nope. It's been almost two years since then, and Valve has still not brought us any substantial, major update besides the seasonal ones we get each and every year. And what's even more disheartening is the seeming lack of care that Valve has put into even these seasonal updates. Last year, for instance, the Smithsmith update came with a lot of criticism stemming around the now infamous Whatville being rushed and put into the game last minute. I mean, it's no secret, Valve doesn't produce any of their own maps anymore, so they rely solely off of community-made maps. However, if they're going to continue doing this, they should at least test these maps out for themselves and give map creators plenty of time in advance to fix any bugs that they might find. And Whatville is a perfect example of what happens when they don't do this. The map came with so many bugs, glitches, and strange map design choices that the community complained pretty much about it the entire month. And to this day, there are still glitches on that map that Valve has not fixed. And so you'd like to think that Valve would learn from these past mistakes, but it appears that may not be the case. What appears to be a very promising payload map this year, for instance, Breadspace, has come with a lot of glaring errors already. Ones that, had Valve simply playtested the map first, could have easily been prevented. But since they clearly didn't, you can literally just walk through this wall on last, blast up this tower on first, and then completely abuse it, or hop up on these beams and build an elevated sentry. And again, I really don't blame the map creators too much for these bugs, as it's very apparent Valve once again didn't give the creators ample time to actually fix up the map. I mean, if you go to Breadspace's Steam page right now, it literally still says the map is in beta, still under construction. It's clear that the map wasn't ready and was going to need some additional work. But beyond the lack of major updates and Valve's carelessness with seasonal updates, I'd have to be blind not to bring up TF2's biggest current problem, the bot problem. 
Now, in case you're somehow not aware, TF2 has had a total bot infestation for about nearly two years now. What started off as maybe just a small group of annoying bots on Harvest slowly turned into annoying bots practically everywhere in casual TF2. And it's not only a few of them anymore, it's a ton of them. In fact, it's not very rare to find servers nowadays that have been entirely shut down by these bots. And often, they'll join with so many at a time that you can't even kick them off the server. Because of this, many games are abandoned before they even start. Now, Valve has tried to stop these bots on their own, but unfortunately, going about doing so in the most minimal, band-aid type approaches you can think of. See, what'll typically end up happening is Valve will create some small new patch that either shuts the bots up or helps us kick them from the servers, but within a month or two, the bot creators find a workaround for these patches and then the cycle just continues. The bots aren't ever truly stopped at their source. And at one point this year, the body issue even got so bad that the TF2 community actually sought refuge in a company called Faceit, a competitive platform guaranteeing botless and crit-free servers for all. And a couple of us TF2ers tried to promote it, and a lot of people showed up initially, but unfortunately, Faceit's idea of casual versus the average player's idea of casual weren't quite the same thing. Now, they did mention working on a more casual version of casual, but by the time it was being announced, it was already just too late, as players had largely abandoned the platform. Maybe someday if the bot problem never does get better and face it actually does create this casual casual, we could try it out again, but until then, we're pretty much just stuck either waiting for Valve to fix the problem itself, or sticking to community servers, or just skipping from game to game to game to game until we finally find a playable lobby. So, all this to say again, Team Fortress 2 is in its best place and in its worst place all at the same time. But at this point, none of us quite know what to expect in the future from Valve. Maybe they'll finally realize TF2's player base has practically doubled since its golden days and could be worth giving another shot at major updates. Or, maybe in 2022, Valve will finally solve the bot problem and we'll never have to worry about bots again. Or, maybe Valve will continue just making small bug fixes here and there, year-round, and continue releasing these seasonal updates like clockwork. We don't know, but at the moment, that's what it's looking like. But all we can do as a community is stay strong and continue pushing on like we've always done. Honestly, if you really look at it, the community is always what's kept this game alive. The community, the modders, and everyone's creativity. And I mean, hey, as long as stuff is constantly flowing through the workshop and Valve at least updates this game seasonally, TF2 YouTubers will always still have content they can make for you guys as well. But hey, here's to next year being an even better year for TF2 than this year. And hey, maybe this year we'll also get a permanent map thrown into casual, just like how Pier was last year. My personal pick for this year would be Altitude, since it's a really well done map, and Attack Defend would still have a slot open for it. But anyways, what do you guys think? Do you think we have anything to look forward to in the future of this game? Do you think Valve will ever actually give us another major update? Or do you think we'll just be stuck with these Scream Fortress and Smith Smith updates from here on out? Let me know in the comments below, I'll be responding to a few of them personally. And anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, as always, and until next time, this was Big Joey! Later.